If you're diagnosing a DC electrical circuit, the first thing you need to understand is continuity. And by definition, it is the unbroken and consistent existence or operation of something over a period of time. But in normal human words, it just means that your wires need to be connected from beginning to end. And if there's a break in that circuit, then it doesn't have continuity. I built this circuit with a variety of different problems in it, and we're gonna go through step by step, checking continuity, and hopefully giving you some tips and tricks to help you diagnose your own circuit. Now the first thing you want to do is get out your multimeter and set it to ohms. That's the one that looks like a horseshoe on the meter, and all that's doing is measuring resistance between the red and the black terminals of your multimeter. You'll notice if I touch them, it actually is reading the resistance through my body from one fingertip to the other. And that's something that you actually have to watch out for when you're checking for continuity, because if you are touching these terminals really closely like this, Unintentionally, you may actually be measuring the resistance through your body and not through the actual wiring harness. Now, if you're gonna be checking continuity through a circuit, make sure there's no power going through the circuit because you can't check resistance if there's power going through it. So we have to set this to volts DC and then we'll take the ground terminal and pop it on the ground side and the positive and put it on the positive side. And you can see there's 12 volts at this circuit breaker. So this is powered up right now and we need to remove that power. So I'm gonna remove it. I'm gonna take off the ground too. Now the ultimate goal here is to have power go through the circuit breaker, through the wires, all the connectors, through the fuse, to the switch, through the flasher relay and to the light bulb. And the ground is obviously on the opposite side. And that will light up the, the light bulb like you just saw a moment ago. But if there are any breaks in the wires, then that is going to obviously prevent the electricity from flowing through to our light bulb and lighting the light bulb up. So let's start with the circuit breaker. Now by looking at one of these circuit breakers, it's actually really obvious that there's no power going through it because you can see the reset button. So if we do this, then the power connects from this terminal out this terminal. But let's prove it with the meter. We have the meter set to ohms and we'll take the positive lead and the negative lead and we can see that there is no connection between these two terminals and therefore there's no connection going through here. Now if we reset the circuit breaker and test it again, you can now see that there is continuity through the circuit breaker. So now we know with the circuit breaker turned on, there is power coming in and there is power on this terminal. So let's follow the power out maybe to here and we'll see if there's power here. And if not, we'll figure out why. So we'll take the positive lead of the meter, pop it on here and the negative here, and we can see that there is no continuity between the two, which means there is a break in this wire between here and here. Now, if this was in your own car, you would just visually look at the wire and see if there's an obvious break between this point and this point. Now that wire might be the length of your car, or it may be a few inches, but you wanna look for obvious breaks in the wire, or of course, aftermarket connections like this one. This is a butt connector and we're gonna start there and see if there's a problem under that. If you do find any kind of connections that don't really belong in your circuit, a quick and dirty test is to just pull on them from each side and see if the connector falls apart. Because if it's corroded or the crimp is bad, it's just gonna fall right apart and it'll be an easy diagnosis. So let's give it a tug and voila. The connection is not good at the butt connector. It is crimped on both sides, but there's no copper hanging out of this wire. So the power is probably only going from here into this connector. Let's check it out. Okay, so there is continuity coming out of this terminal, going through the wire and into the butt connector, but it's obviously not going out the butt connector further down the circuit. All right, so in the interest of getting things done, I got an uninsulated butt connector, and then I got some shrink tubing. So we're gonna pop some on here and see how it looks. Cut the wire a little shorter too. These are not my favorite pliers or crimpers, but they are the closest. We now have the new butt connector in here with a nice shrink wrap and we are gonna test for continuity again and make sure it is working. All right, so we have continuity through the circuit breaker and then of course we have our new butt connector and that is allowing the continuity to continue all the way up to this terminal. So let's go to the next part 
and see if we have continuity there, which is this fuse. And it looks like we do. So we know that the power is traveling through here and getting all the way up to this fuse. So now let's check the other side of the fuse. We've got nothing. Nothing there either. So at this point, we can assume that this fuse is probably not working, but let's take a closer look. And right away you can see a burn mark in it. And that is a sure sign that it's a popped fuse, but we'll prove it out just by doing this. Okay, so there is no continuity from one side of the fuse to the other, and that means the fuse is no good. Let's compare it to a good fuse. Obviously no burn marks, making sure it's the same size that you took out. And you can see this one does have continuity. And that means the fuse is good, which means we can pop it into here. And we'll check for continuity again to make sure it's working. Okay, so the continuity is definitely to that. Now let's check out the switch. Okay, so there's no continuity here. So between here and here, there is some kind of problem. Let's take a closer look. Okay, so there is nothing going on there. Now, if you have a wire that looks totally fine, or maybe the wire itself is buried under the dashboard somewhere and you can't find it, one way that I like to, to diagnose it is to run a brand new wire from one end to the other and just eliminate that wire from the circuit. Because right now we know that there is no connection from here to here and the wire looks totally fine. So let's grab a new wire make a new one and just jump it temporarily to see if it makes any difference. So I've now made a new yellow wire to replace the red wire and we're going to prove out that one has continuity and one doesn't once again. So let's check the red wire first and we'll go from this end to this end. And there's nothing. So now let's try this one. Okay, so it is a continuous circuit from one end to the other, and this one is not. Now if you can actually get a close-up of the wire and examine it and make sure the ends are tight and then go over kind of every inch of it to make sure it's okay, you may find that the wire itself is broke on the inside of the insulation or maybe a mouse got into it or some sort of critter and ate away the wire. And that will obviously cause a lack of continuity in that wire. So let's replace this yellow wire uh, in the spot of the red one and see what's next. So we're back at it again, testing for continuity, starting at the very starting point again. And we've got great continuity, great continuity, both sides of the fuse are looking good. This terminal has continuity all the way up to this. And then of course, the other side of the switch does not have continuity until it's turned on. So let's turn it on. And it does, it's got continuity. So we are perfect all the way up to the switch. So let's creep up to the next component right here. And we've got nothing. Okay, so there's no continuity from here to here. Now, if you can, you always want to just check over the wire if you can see it and make sure the ends are tight on the components, which this one is not. As you can see, the screw is loose. And that is actually preventing the continuity from coming out of the switch and going down to the flasher. Now this could have had a broken wire just like our other one, but in this case, it's just a loose connection. Now loose terminals actually happen way more often than you think, especially in the racing world and off-roading. Anything that really takes a lot of abuse and has kind of been through a lot, you'll often find loose connections. Luckily, they're pretty easy to fix. All right, let's check for the continuity again. We know we have it all the way up to this side of the switch. And of course the output of the switch with it turned on, of course turning it off, we'll remove that. And it looks like we have it on this terminal now. 
and we are continuous all the way to this terminal and on the output of the flasher. But one thing that you notice is there's a lot of resistance there. It goes from 0.3 ohms to 3.1 mega ohms. You see the little M on there? That's mega. That's a lot. Now in a perfect world, we would see continuity all the way through the circuit right to the ground terminal. But we don't. And that's because LED lights actually have little tiny circuit boards in them that break that continuity. So if we had a regular incandescent bulb like this 194, and then we check for continuity again, we will see that 3.1 mega ohms that we see right here. So that means that the circuit is connected all the way through, through the flasher, through the bulb, to the ground side of the bulb. And that means that if we turn this on, this light bulb should actually work once we hook up the electricity. I guess it's time to try it. We'll put power on this side. We'll put the ground on this side. And sure enough, the bulb is blinking and it's controlled by the switch. So at this point, we can actually throw our LED bulb back in and it will actually work just fine. It just doesn't show continuity going through it because it has a little circuit board in there that's preventing it. Now, if you like diagnosing things, especially wiring, you will most certainly love my other videos, which you will find up in the corners of the screen, I believe, probably somewhere. And of course, be sure to share it with your friends, like and subscribe and all that stuff, and we'll see you on the next one.